Hey guys, welcome to the Block Thrasher Daily Morning Crypto Update, where we are shattering the complexities of crypto with news, commentary, analysis, and education. The Daily Morning Update is a news show. Every morning I get up at 4.30 a.m. and I scour the internet to find the most important and most compelling news items in the cryptocurrency space, and I bring those to you so that you don't have to go about doing that. The best way to consume it is just to subscribe to the YouTube channel, or if you're listening on the podcast, subscribe to that as well. You can find it on Spotify, Apple, Google. It's everywhere. Anchor, FM, you name it. It's on others too that I can't even think of right now. Today's March 10, 2021. It's another great day for crypto. We've got some stories about the SEC versus XRP. Seems like this is just in the news every single day. The drama continues to increase. SEC coming out bringing the hammer down on xrp xrp responding going back and forth we're going to look at that real quick here in just a bit we got the word of the day as usual help you guys build your vocabulary we're going to do the market update we're going to talk about congress and how they're talking about tackling crypto and looking into more new regulation will that be good will that be bad f miners they're always into it they're all their ing the ingenuity of miners never ceases to amaze me we're going to talk about that story here in just a bit red hot chilies was a coin highlight a couple days back and it's pumping like mad. Gonna bring that to you as well. CB lists some new coins and we're gonna talk about a coin highlight as usual. To get you guys some new and fresh information about a token that you might wanna look at and pay attention to. All right, let's jump into the word of the day. Pleonasm, pleonasm, P-L-E-O-N-A-S-M. It means the use of more words than are necessary to express an idea. So basically it's redundancy. Pleonasm. I know that I'm guilty of this sometimes. I, for emphasis, I just pile on adjective upon adjective. <laughs> this is kind of like loquacious, which will be another word of the day maybe sometime that will do. But pleonasm. It's a good one. P-L-E-O-N-A-S-M. Don't be guilty. Don't be guilty of pleonasm. Using more words than are necessary to an express to express an idea or redundancy. You know, it's interesting because I remember when I was getting working on my master's degree and we were learning communication, we were taught by the professor that, well, actually somebody asked the professor, he was stating that he was asked to come and give a speech. And he said, well, they asked, how much time do you need to prepare for this speech? And he said, well, how much time do I have? And he, his response then was, if you give me an hour, I can do it right now. If you give me an hour to speak, if you give me half an hour, I'm going to need two days to prepare. If you're giving me 10 minutes, I'm going to need a week to prepare. And the point was, it's much more difficult to compress a lot of information into a clear and concise and compelling short and abbreviated form than it is to just get up and talk about something for a long, long time and cover all of your points. And of course, I struggle with that as well. Anyway, that's a little rabbit trail off of pleonasm. I'm guilty of anacoluthons every now and then too. Don't worry. I'll make sure that's a word of the day soon so you know what that means. All right, let's jump into the market and see what's happening. What is going on with cryptocurrency prices? You know, it's a mixed bag this morning. We're seeing some red. We're seeing some green. Bitcoin is up though 1.85% in the last 24 hours. It is up a nice 6. 1-2% in the last seven days though for the week. So looking good, Bitcoin is at $55,255.20. So we're not quite back up to the high, which was you know, 57,058 a uh, few weeks back, but we're headed in that direction. That's good. Oh, let's look real quick at the total market cap. We're sitting at $1.686 trillion. Very good. We've been seeing over the last few days more money coming into the market as a whole. But Bitcoin's dominance is 60.5% and Ethereum is at 12.4%. The uh, gas fees today for GUE is uh, 82 for the slow and at 129 for the high. Ethereum. Ethereum has been seeing a boost as well with the news of the EIP, the Ethereum improvement uh, proposal that has been adopted going forward where they're going to take steps to reduce the fees on the Ethereum network. That should be a good thing. Ethereum is up 12.85% the last seven days, currently $1,818.85. A Binance coin catapulted into the number three slot just a few days ago. Once again, we've been seeing Binance sort of rise up and then Cardano knocks them out and going back and forth like this for a little bit over the last few weeks. Well, currently Binance is at the number three spot, up 5.67% in the last 24 hours, up 11% in the last week, 
it is at $282.69, trying to push up toward 300 and we'll probably see that happen here, I would imagine, if we continue to see the market as a whole rise in the coming days. We're getting really close to that March 12th date, which was the historic date in 2017, which the market crashed. Bitcoin fell by 50%. So we'll see if that's going to happen or not. Uh, it's looking good. It's looking like that is probably not going to happen. But of course, who could know? We've talked a lot about there's so many things that are different now versus 2017. In fact, I had a long discussion just last night with and uh, with uh, Brandon Frenchick, a Vulcan trader. Uh, we did a podcast. It's going to be coming out here soon, probably release it this weekend. We talked for a couple of hours about all kinds of things. We went into depth about the differences between 2017 bull run and this bull run. Some good stuff. So make sure you check that out. Cardano. Cardano is at number four. It is struggling. Cardano is down 1.61% in the last 24 hours, up uh, down 6.62% for the week, and it is currently $1.17. Tether continues to stay at a dollar. Interesting. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just don't know why it uh, crypto why coin market cap and some of the others put these stable coins in the market cap rankings at all. I mean, I suppose that it's good information to know how much money 37 37 billion dollars being held in Tether and obviously that could be an indicator of whether people are, you know, what the people are thinking, whether they're thinking hey, the market might go down. And so I want to get into Tether and sort of uh, maintain my my gains that I've enjoyed or not. Or whether, you know, when the Tether market cap starts to drop, that potentially means that people are going out and buying other buying the cryptos, right? Anyway, I just wanted to mention, I, I forgot when, when we were out on Bitcoin in terms of market cap, Bitcoin is back up over $1 trillion. It is currently at $1.02 trillion in total market cap. So that is awesome. Great to see. Polkadot. Polkadot surging a little bit in the last 24 hours, up 7.70%. It is now $38.94. XRP is down 2.62% in the number seven spot. It is currently 46 cents. Uniswap. Uniswap continuing to surge, uh, not in the last 24 hours. It's actually down 4.26, but for the week, it's up 17. percent four or five percent at thirty one dollars and ninety four cents this is incredible it's amazing to see uniswap at the number eight spot obviously now becoming the number one dex decentralized exchange and it is it's good to see i like this it will be interesting to see what happens with uniswap i'm hoping that they become chain agnostic and bring some other of the platforms onto their platform if they do that uniswap is going to be golden it's going to be incredible litecoin is at 200 dollars up 0.65 percent in the last 24 hours up 1.82 percent for the week Chainlink suffering a little bit Chainlink rounds up the top 10 coming in at number 10 it is down 2.48 percent in the last 24 hours currently 30 dollars and 38 cents bitcoin cash number 11 538 stellar number 12 41 cents dogecoin number 14 0.0568 Eight, seven wrapped bitcoin obviously the bitcoin price theta number 16 been rising significantly up 48.82 percent on the week up 12.47 percent in the last 24 hours currently five dollars and 67 cents and that was our coin highlight a couple days ago if you missed it theta is doing some incredible things it is essentially a decentralized youtube and streaming service like twitch really incredible founded by one of the original co-founders of youtube something to keep an eye on uh nem 60 cents ave 426 all right that'll be enough for our market overview for the day let's move on to this story about sec and ripple the sec accuses ripple of diverting court's attentions with quote legally improper defenses this thing is turning into the uh, soap opera drama of cryptocurrency of the cryptocurrency space right now the united states securities and exchange commission sec is in the news today after it hit back at ripple again with a motion to strike the firm's defense relating to the sec's quote lack of due process and fair notice so ripple is presenting this argument that the sec failed to give their business partners the exchanges and such fair notice that 
the XRP might have been an unregistered security. And so the, you know, the SEC is coming out and basically saying, no, look, it's not our obligation or people within the SEC, our employees, etc., to inform you of what the laws are. You are responsible to know what the laws are. It's sort of like if you get pulled over by a officer because you've been speeding and you say, well, you know, he says, do you know why I pulled you over? And you're like, I have no idea why you pulled me over. And he says, well, you were speeding. And, and you're like, oh, I, you know, and he says, do you know what the speed limit is? And you're like, well, I think it's 55. And he's like, no, it's 35. You know, <laughs> excuse me while I get a sip of coffee. I live, I love, I am addicted to coffee. Mm. He's going to say, well, you're responsible to know what the speed limit is. You can't claim ignorance. So this is sort of what's happening here. In a letter addressed to Judge Torres, the SEC alleged that Ripple seeks to avoid liability for its unregistered offerings by diverting the court's attention with a number of affirmative defense arguments, which have all been pigeonholed into the label, quote, fair notice. The SEC's trial lawyer, lawyer <clears throat> struggle to say the word lawyer for sure, and the author, no, not normally, but anyway, I was going to go off on something about lawyers, but I'm not. We might have lawyers in the audience, and I love you guys. <laughs> the author, <laughs> the SEC's trial lawyer, and the author of the motion in question, George Tenrio, also went on to clarify that the agency's intentions would be to strike the upcoming motions to dismiss filed by the Ripple founders Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson by requesting the court to set a joint briefing schedule for the same time. According to the SEC, Ripple's fair notice defenses are legally improper. That's enough about that. There also was a story today, again, it's like this. There's a story on auto repeat. I, I'm I'm convinced. Uh, who you know? You could just basically like schedule this story to to come out on the week, right? Because it was just another story about Jed Michaela, one of the co-founders of Ripple, selling another hundred million dollars, whatever it was, a large sum of XRP this last week. And this just like continues to happen. I've talked about it numerous times, and so I almost don't even. You know, it's just kind of like it's not even news anymore. Like, we just know that this is something that happens. So. Anyway, not good news, I would say, this this recent update with what's happening with the SEC and XRP. It looks like the, uh, the SEC is going to, and, and that was one of the things that was in question because it was the outgoing SEC uh, people that filed this suit against Ripple. And so there was a thought that maybe the SEC would just drop it, but it looks like that's not going to be the case. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this and see what happens. Moving on to the next story of the day, U.S. Congress tables bill to clarify crypto regulatory framework. Now, I don't know if that, that headline seems wrong to me because that would indicate that they dropped the bill, but they, they have not. The, basically, the U.S. Congress is set to make clarifications to the existing digital asset regulation in the U.S. Uh, the development is expected to provide a legal framework for regulating and classification of assets like Bitcoin in the United States. So what they have done is they've created a working group to, that is going to set up to evaluate existing digital assets regulation. We don't know yet. There's no indication as to what is going to happen with this or what kind of regulations might come about. But there's been some lack of clarity for sure as to who actually has proper regulatory authority, whether it's the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission, or whether it's the CFTC, the Commodities uh, you know, Commission. And they're going to try to figure this thing out and see who has actual regulatory uh, control over it. And, and obviously, if a crypto is declared to be a security, then it seems like it would be the SEC, as in Ripple's case or XRP's case. But so many, it seems like, would if they're declared to be assets, they're going to come under, or commodities are going to come under the CFTC, which actually I think would potentially be a better thing. And obviously, we've seen approval of some things already by the CFTC, such as the the futures that are trading on the COMEX, the commodities the commodity exchange form COMEX with the BTC futures and the Ethereum futures. And so this is just something to keep abreast of. We'll see what happens. Uh, you know, as is reported by BTC manager here, there are no clear regulations on when a certain cryptocurrency is a security or not. This is evident in the current legal struggle between the SEC and Ripple and where the regulator claims that its token XRP is a security. While Ripple claims no, it's not. 
They claim otherwise. So the bill submitted today mandates that Congress creates a working group within 90 days of its passage composed of SEC and CFTC representatives. Also, the group will consist of representatives from fintech companies, investor protection groups, financial services institutions, and economic researchers. So basically, we can you know keep our fingers crossed and hope that what comes out of this group ends up being positive for the cryptocurrency space and not some sort of draconian. And I don't think we have any reason to have an expectation that it's going to necessarily be negative, but of course it could be. So we'll keep an eye on that. Ethereum miners, miners in general, always amaze me with their ingenuity. And here's a story that illustrates that. Now, recently NVIDIA has decided that in their latest GPU, graphical processing units, you know, which are used to mine Ethereum, that they are going to, that they were going to place restrictions, limits on the speeds, on the amount of hash, of the hashing power of the graphics cards, of the graphics, you know, general of the GPUs. And they did this because they wanted to come out with and create a, another line of cards that was specific for miners so that miners would stop swallowing up the supply of the gaming cards that gamers want but they set these they set this technological limitations right they, they tried to set it so that the rtx 360 would only be able to to mine f hash and other algorithms like that at but specifically f hash for ethereum at 25 mega hash 20 to 25 mega hash per second. However, miners already figured out a way to circumvent that. Screenshots posted by Tech League Twitter account I underscore leak underscore VN show a stack of eight RTX 3060 graphics cards operating at far above NVIDIA's 20 to 25 mega hash mining limit while reportedly using Ethereum's Dagger Hashimoto mining algorithm. On the same day, a cryptocurrency-focused Facebook group from Vietnam posted a graphic announcing the RTX 3060 had indeed been bypassed and could now reach its full power of 50 mega hash per second thanks to a mod. <laughs> anyway, this is funny. I don't know why you'd do RTX 3060 though because I think a 1070, 1080, some of the older generation cards which probably even use less power will mine at nearly 50, 50 mega hash anyway, especially when overclocked. So... You know, I don't know why you do that, but uh, maybe I'm wrong about that and should go check the numbers. But yeah, I mean, I'm pretty, pretty stinking certain that it's actually much more economical because I have looked at it in the past to buy some of those older cards, uh, especially with the prices of the newer, newer cards, and you're going to end up with a better ROI. Anyway, we're going to move on from that. I just thought it was interesting and kind of fun. A couple of days ago, one of our coin highlights was Chili's. Now, Chili's is doing some incredible things. It's NFT type coins that are tied to sports teams, right? So Chili's has is big in Europe and they have a bunch of contracts with football teams, soccer teams over there in Europe in order to do all types of things with NFTs with those teams and to promote the teams. And so they were in the news the other day because they are coming to the United States and they spent something like $40 million to open up offices in New York City and they're going to try to make they're going to try to reach out to the sports teams in the United States and bring some of the same type of things that they've been doing with the European teams here. So Chile's market cap hits 1.3 billion amid a massive rally. The Chile's CHZ, see that's the token ticker, CHZ has reached a, cap, a market cap of 1.3 billion. It reached this, this all time high on March 9th, so yesterday. Interest is likely due to the company's expansion to the US and a corollary effect uh, of the popular NFTs, which which I just mentioned, uh, their expansion here to the U.S. Uh, on March 1st, the token was trading around five cents. By March 4th, the price had tripled to around 15 cents before retracing back around 10 cents. By March 6th, however, by March 8th, the price had risen back to the previous high, and then it doubled once again to almost 31 cents the following day, and is currently at the time of the writing here trading at 25 cents. Chili's is one to keep 
an eye on for sure. On March 2nd, Chile CEO Alexander Dreyfus announced that his company would be expanding into the U.S. market. This could be another contributing factor to CHC's six-fold increase in price. Dreyfus said it would be opening an office in New York City with an initial investment of $50 million. Okay, so it wasn't $40 million. I was off by $10. $50 million. Uh, the Malta-based company enables sports teams to offer cryptocurrency tokens to their fans. These tokens allow fans to vote in polls concerning their teams as well as receive special promotions and rewards. So, so just good stuff. And you know, as I've mentioned many times, this is one area where I think NFTs make a ton of sense and where we could see an explosion. Because the reason being is these these sports teams, they have all types of media, digital media that can be that an NFT can be attributed to, and they have copyrights to that that media. And so you, you know, it, there's a legal foundation there even as well for them to, to create these NFTs. And then if someone, you know, if it's a, if it's a video clip, let's say like, like, like with hot shots, uh, of a sports, you know, of, of a game, no, you know, someone might just say, well, well, can someone just like copy that and send it? Well, sure they can, but then they're there's copyright infringements happening there. And if that NFT isn't connected, you can add another layer into all of that, that helps you know, not only monetize all types of sports memorabilia and, and uh, you know, content, but it also helps protect it from, you know, and, and, and from being, you know, just duplicated and copied and redistributed and that sort of thing. So, so this isn't really that much of a news item of the day, but I, it was just sort of a launch into our coin highlight later on. Coinbase is listing Matic, Sushi, and SKL. All of these coins having you know enjoying significant price increases over the last week we've talked about matic matic is a layer two is a layer two uh side chain that works with ethereum and uh it's a it's a good looking solid project we've talked about sushi of course which is the uniswap clone which has been obviously doing incredibly well in, in, you know, in conjunction with Uniswap, we've never talked about SKL, and so we're going to talk about that here today. What is SKL? SKL actually is somewhat similar to Matic in that it is also a second layer. Layer we could call it a parachain or side chain or shard. I guess I mean it's not technically connected to the sharding, but it's a layer two network that runs alongside Ethereum with decentralized apps and smart contracts. Etc. Currently, scale is trading at 54 cents, up 56.67% in the last 24 hours, doing doing really really well. Uh, you can check out scale at scale.network. The ticker symbol is SKL, and they are currently at rank number 223 on market cap. And as you can see uh, with the chart here, for those who are watching video. It has just gone parabolic in the last week. If we relate that to Bitcoin, we can see it was tracking, 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 tracking. It looks like you know, if uh, this continues to trend the way it has, it might decouple from Bitcoin here a little bit. We shall see. So here is the website for those who are watching on video. And for those who are not, I'll describe it. Scale.network is an elastic blockchain network. So what it does is it allows for developers to build decentralized apps in a much faster, more simple way where they can deploy their apps quicker and easier. It says run your dApps in a decentralized modular cloud built for real world needs and configured for the requirements. So this is a solution to the problems that we've been seeing with Ethereum with the high transaction fees and the scalability issues and the congestion that you know has been uh, occurring. And so all the things that Ethereum 2.0 looks to do in the future, Scale's already doing. It's proof of stake, right? So they have a Byzantine fault tolerant standard for security. Uh, BFT guarantees that the network can reach consensus even when up to one third of participants are malicious. Uh, they have an asynchronous protocol following the same model as the internet. This protocol recognizes latencies of nodes and the network, allowing messages to take an, an indefinite period of time delivered. They have a, they have threshold signatures. They have leadership leadership consensus. 
So it says scale network eliminates unnecessary complexity so that you can speed up your dApps and smart contracts in no time with essentially no additional coding. You can use, and this is kind of the beauty of this and why developers, whenever evaluating these type of things, I think the number one question to ask is, will you know, in terms of adoption, will developers want to use this? And, you know, in this case, I think they potentially would because as this states, you can use your existing deployment script, for example, Truffle as in the code sample and just change two lines of code to deploy your Solidity smart contracts, so the same programming language, everything the same as Ethereum, to a configurable decentralized elastic side chain right that is going to be able to scale that is going to be able to bring speed that is going to be able to enjoy decreased fees so according to scale many dApps are already running smart contracts on scales elastic side chains these include games content streaming services tcr based platforms and more uh, it is a proof of stake system there are validators you currently can't become a validator as of yet because if you click on the become a validator it says to return shortly that's taking one thank you for your interest in joining the scale network validator compute community please come back soon to sign up so it's going to be proof of stake and they already have a bunch of partners that they're working with as well so just a very quick sort of cursory look at scale it looks to be very similar to matic and a good solution the problem with this type of thing is will if this will they have longevity will they if, if ethereum 2.0 kicks in and everything that is currently an issue is solved will there be a need for scale will there be a need for matic will they continue to garner support and attention from developers i don't know something to watch something to see and then of course on top of that we have all of these other platform coins like cardano and polka dot and phantom and you know avalanche and uh, Elrond and the list goes on that have already solved a lot of the problems that these layer two solutions for Ethereum are solving and they've done it natively on chain in many cases. So that'll be something to watch. Listen, friends, it's always a great day to store more, to stack more, to earn more crypto. I thank you for your time. I appreciate you coming every day, sticking with me, hanging out. Have a great day. Appreciate and love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye.